appreciate you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Kevin okay. is our next emerging leader. Go Local Prov, with, along with the United Way, uh, team up to identify emerging leaders in our community. So, Kevin, congratulations. Thank you. So excited to have you here today. It's a pleasure to be here in Providence. <laughs> so we're just, yeah, welcome. So um, just to give a little introduction to you, Kevin is Assistant Vice President and Branch Manager of the Washington Trust Company. He's been a member of United Way's Rhode Island's Young Leaders Circle since 2010 and was involved of the chairman of its executive committee for a number of years. Uh, in addition to all of that work, <laughs> he also is uh, president of Exeter Town Council. You're also involved um, with Cranston's w with Cranston's Rotary. Rotary. There we go. Sorry, I lost my uh, lost my train of thought there for a minute. So, uh, very active and involved with the community. So we have quite a bit to talk about today. Sounds like it. Wow. So, Kevin, let's start off by talking a little bit about your involvement with the United Way of Rhode Island. How did you get involved volunteering, especially with the, the Youth Council? Sure. So, I got involved. Uh, Rich Vosio invited me to join. Uh, I knew him through banking. He said, we have this new group for me. I think you'd be great. So, um, joined the group, started volunteering. We were really in the foundation, the formation period at that time. So, I got pretty much right on the ground level, uh, became a volunteer leader. Uh, you say work my way up the ranks, so membership chair, vice chair, and then I was chair for several years um, before setting, stepping aside to let somebody else um, take the reins and go from there. So, um, been involved for a while. What's it like for you to work with, with young people within Rhode Island and with the community? It's great. Um, I like working with my peers. That's, um, when we say the youth, we're talking 20s, 30s, and 40 year olds, so people that are my age. Um, and I just like getting people involved. Um, I think the millennial age group um, and the older Gen X's, or the younger Gen X's, don't have a bigger voice, so we're trying to encourage that voice in the community, whether it's through the nonprofit or the political world, I, I think is important, so. I definitely think so too. Sometimes when people say millennial, it has a negative context, but I've learned that I am a millennial, so I try not to look so Frown I, upon millennials, I right? agree. I just found that out myself. I <laughs> thought I was right. more of a Gen Xer, but I found I'm actually a millennial. So I kind of so don't hate us all. We're all <laughs> we're not all so bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> we're not so bad, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about your work with the Exeter Town Council. Sure. Uh, you were elected president in 2014 and then mm -hmm. re-elected in 2016. Nope. Other way around. Elected first in 14, elected what? president in 16. Okay, all right, sorry about that. That's all right. um, and it's my understanding that through the town council, you focus a lot on public safety and finances. Talk to me a little bit about to why that work for you is so important, why you've continued to work sure. on the town council. Um, I'm a lifelong Exeter resident. I moved a whopping three miles from the house I grew <laughs> up in. Um, my wife we went down the hall, we bought her parents' house actually. Um, so it's, a li I've, it's my home. Um, so, and a lot of my friends still live in Exeter. We, uh, like Rhode Island, people don't leave Rhode Island, people don't leave Exeter. You, you live there, you grow up there, so it's home for me. Um, and getting involved, I really wanted to make sure of public safety. Um, in Exeter, we don't have a full-time police force. We have a part-time, uh, a volunteer fire department. So really listen to EMA, listen to the fire chief we have, making sure that the policies we have in place and the ordinances really benefit everybody. Um, one example is we had this unimproved road in Exeter and fire trucks couldn't get down it, police and rescue from neighboring towns couldn't use it, and they really had a lot of reasons why it would be beneficial. So we looked at it from Exeter and felt this is a priority for us to reopen it. Um, I'm proud to say last August we did reopen the road, um, made it from an unmaintained status to a maintained status so people, more people could use it, fire departments, um, and so now it's open, so. That's great. So that's one thing that you accomplished. Talk mm -hmm. to us about some of the other goals that you hope to accomplish. Like you said, you've been a, a lifelong resident of Exeter. That has to be really neat. You've grown up there. You've seen your families grow up there. Um, what else do you hope to do to improve the town that you're living in? So I, I'd like to say that Exeter's perfect. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I think there's just some small improve, uh, efficiencies in the town, um, whether we're duplicating efforts within our own uh, municipal government uh, maybe see more duplication uh, or sharing of services with other towns. And I think that would be a cost savings. Um, and I also see more businesses coming to Exeter. Um, I think we have a reputation of being like the hit town, um, but I think we do have great opportunities. Um, going to your last, we do have our Exeter brewery, the Tilted Barn. Uh, I know it's a big draw for people, so I'd like to see more businesses and more people kind of see the, what we have to offer in Exeter. So Tilted Barn. 
Oh, you want to say it's a hidden gem, but it's not so hidden no, anymore. No, not anymore. It's tough to it's tough to get there sometimes. Yeah, there's a long wait in line. <laughs> Atlanta. You have a good product. You have great owners, Matt and Cara. So, um, but yeah, actually we have Arcadia as well. So there's a lot to offer in Exeter. I'd like to see it showcase more. Well, we'll do our best to make that happen then, right? Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit um, about becoming an emerging leader. What you're doing within the community. How do you think that you're helping to make Rhode Island a better place? I think I'd like to make it a better place. Just by getting more people involved. Um, if you have the voice of small people, I think that's not representative. So to get more people involved and bring more voices to the table, like one of my mentors is Tony Mayoni, um, and he always talks about getting different people to the table, bringing that cohesive together. Um, and that's what I like to do, try to get people my age involved so we can bring our voice. And then also look at nonprofits, we are their future. If Tony's saying like they age out a lot, but if we get new people in, it takes longer for them to age out if they're 20 and then if they're 80, so. That's true. So United Way does great work here. Do you have some other nonprofits that you like to either help with donations or help put fund and volunteer with or? Um, I'm a big or, fan of the Boy Scouts. I grew up a Boy Scout. Nice. Um, and then with Rotary, we do a lot of stuff within the Cranston community. Um, we're doing a food drive right now through the schools. Um, we just did one in Thanksgiving um, to help the local CCAP. So, that's where my, a lot of my effort right now is going through, is through the Cranston Rotary. That's excellent. That's excellent. So you talked a little bit about to one of your mentors. Um, are there other people within the community that you look up to? Um, I, I think like I, I like a lot of peers. Like I see when um, Amanda Heinsen, also from United Way, um, she's another emerging leader, um, or at least I consider one. Um, and she's someone I, I can bounce ideas off of. Um, and then I'd say Maureen Solheimer, one of my former managers, she told me a lot about interactions and just listening. Sometimes we listen to talk, we don't listen just to listen to the other person. I think that needs to be more of that. And she really helped teach that with me, into, or instilled that in me. Oh, yes. I think that is something <laughs> we should all practice. Sometimes when we have conversations, it's just two people talking, right? not listening. <laughs> Even if you're listening, you're just like, oh, how do I respond? You're not trying to think, what is this person trying to tell me? And, how can I respond to them in a way that's beneficial for them, not just what's beneficial for me? And do you think just by doing that, we can use that to help make the state better? Absolutely. I think sometimes we hear a lot of voices, but nobody is listening. Who's on the other side of that? Um, I think the, the story of the Little Prince, I remember reading it way back in high school, and it was all those people yelling at the end, but who is listening to each other? So. Yeah, I definitely think that makes a lot of sense. Um, let's let me ask you this, and this is always kind of one of our favorite questions okay. on Go Local. Um, as an emerging leader, what have you learned from your success? But almost more importantly, what have you learned from some of your failures? Ooh, um, some of my successes. Just to be patient. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, and, and to listen to people. Um, I think I've gotten where I have, and all my successes have been from listening. Um, Failures, I like to think of failures as it's an opportunity for learning. Um, and managing people, you tell people, uh, or in essence, I, I learned 2,000 ways not to make a light bulb. So it's, it's all how you phrase it. If you think it's a failure and you look down on it, you're not going to grow from it. But if you're like, oh, this is a learning opportunity, and then regardless of what it was, it's like, all right, now I know something that I didn't know before. So it's all, I think, in your mindset, trying to stay positive on it. I definitely think learning opportunities can benefit us all. Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you, you did mention how we can all help make Rhode Island a better place, but do you think just involvement, if we all just got a little more involved or all listened to each other, that really can, can help? I, I think so. I really do. I think if you only have a small group of people leading everybody, yeah. you're not getting all the message. Because um, somebody may have a perspective that nobody else considered and that might help solve it, whatever the issue or the problem is. And I think more voices, or if you have a something that you're really passionate about, you bring that passion to it, it's going to get more people involved and you can help solve it. Uh, let me ask you this. I'll give you the option here. Okay. What inspires you in your day-to-day -day life? Or I'll give you the option, who inspires you in your day-to-day -day life? I'll take who. Okay. For 200. Okay. <laughs> it's your, um, your interview. <laughs> I'm going to say, um, actually, I'm inspired by my, my two boys, um, Patrick and Finnegan. Um, what I do, I look at, that's my future. I want them to, when they get older, look, look, look up to me and say, that was my dad. My dad did, did all this good stuff. So when I start doing stuff where I'm active in the community, I'm like, I think of, all right, how are they going to look at this if this got published in the paper? Um, and so that really who inspires me, even though they're only three and six, like, that's who I want to be proud of me. So, 
Well, and if, and exactly, you said it. That, that is our future. So if we're not working harder to make their generation better, then what are we working for? Right. Exactly. Uh, let's talk about some fun here. Okay, uh, I love fun. Let's talk a little bit about, I'm sure you love a lot of places in Exeter, but do you have a favorite place that you like to go or visit within the state? Sure. I love Arcadia and Pawkatuck, um, or the rivers. Um, I, me and my friends, wife and kids all included, um, we do a ton of kayaking. We start off on the Wood River and in Exeter, go down to Hope Valley, we do the Pawkatuck, go down to Westerly, um, do a lot of hiking in Arcadia. So. Those are uh, my favorite like, go-to places. And then after we swing by the Tilted Barn, but um, just, I have beer on the mind since I heard that. Last I, time. It's, but, I know, it's tough, uh, especially when there's not any right here. <laughs> but I, I, we love the rivers. There's a lot of good hiking. I mean, it's not mountains, but we have you know, good flat hiking here, um, good training. So spend a lot of times in the woods and on the rivers. That's nice too. Um, good management areas too. and like nice safe places to be able to take the kids. Absolutely. And then, I mean, even some small hills, like 600 feet, I mean, it's small compared to the White Mountains, but still you get a good workout, break a sweat, and have some fun. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, let's talk about books. I always give people this option as well. Do you, what is your favorite book, a book that's made a big impact on your life, or your favorite book that you've read recently? All right, so favorite book would probably be Stranger in a Strange Land or Starship Troopers by Heinlein. Um, both books probably equally favorite. Um, and a lot of it's a lot of commentary on political life. And I think that's probably why they're my favorites all okay. time. All right. Um, and do you have a favorite restaurant or restaurants in Rhode Island? Favorite restaurant. I know those are like we say these are the fun questions, but they're almost, they're, almost they're, like they're, the hard, they're the hardest ones, right? So that's why I was saying favorite restaurant. Now mm -hmm. I say restaurants. So you can name a couple if you like. I know in Providence, I mean Rhode Island is the heart of restaurants. So um, melting pot in Providence, big big fan that's of. Um, and then in Exeter, we have Celestial Cafe, um, good favorite. Um, they actually do a lot of grow local food, so they'll take harvest from local farms and then tell you which farm is actually, you're eating the lettuce from, or you're eating the carrots from, which is really cool. I like that because then you know what, kind of going back to beer once again, you know <laughs> what you're putting in your body, you know where your food's coming it's healthy from. Healthy and safe, and you know you're uh, promoting the local economy as well. So. I think that's important. Um, you've talked a little bit about politics, and you one of your most um, important books that you've yep. read in your life has to do with politics. Do you have future political ambitions? I don't know. I think right now I'm, I'm happy in Exeter. It's it's home. It's I'm comfortable there. Um, I have been asked actually by a lot of other people, hey, are you going to run for higher office? Right now, no, but not going to rule it out in the future. Not going to rule it out in the future. I have to ask. You talk, you're talking about politics, <laughs> right? You might as well. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Molly. As we move forward, you know, we're in February 2018. What do you hope comes about for 2018 Rhode Island? Just looking at the future, whether it's community, whether it's businesses, whether it's politics, what do you hope to see for Rhode Island as we move forward in 2018? I think after 17 and all the divisiveness, I'm hoping to have a more, less divisive um, conversation going in 2018. Um, I know it is election year in Rhode Island. We have the governorship coming up. Um, so will be a lot of back and forth in that, but I'm hoping it's a more a conversation as opposed to yelling at each other. So I'm hoping for calmer. I, I definitely would agree with that. You know, kids, you mentioned you have two young boys. Um, when there is divisiveness and there is not a lot of calm, kids pick up on that. Mm -hmm. You know, and we, we've talked about in our conversation here that you know, we have to work for a future for our children. Do you think that's important when you're talking about whether it's political message or whatever it is that, that we need to lead by example for our children when, when we're talking about politics? Absolutely. They do pick up on it. Um, I'd like to say my TV's not on that much, um, but then when we do have the news on, it's sometimes all on the nightly news, and I'm like, oh, change the channel. So Because I just, don't, the message, the subliminal messages that I think that's sending, sometimes I think they do pick up on, and they'll ask questions, and then that leads to a conversation. Um, and then as you enter the political time and the ads start coming out, um, do we want them exposed to those, some of those, especially those at the angrier messages? So I, mean, I do think we have to think of who is seeing all these messages, not just who our target is. I think that's important as we move forward for a better, brighter 2018 in Rhode Island and everywhere else, right? True. Well, thank you once again, Kevin, for thank being you, our next me. emerging leader. It's been so fun to chat with thank you. Thank you, been honored. I have a couple other books I need to read, I suppose. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah, put them on my book list. Uh, so, Kevin, our next emerging leader here on Go Local Prov, and thanks to United Way for being our partner in this. So, thanks so much. Uh, we're going thank to you. take a break and get set up here for our next guest on Go Local Live. Thank you.
Thanks, Kevin. That was awesome. Yeah. Great job. Thanks.